<laughs> and the audio is officially rolling. Camera's rolling. One, two, three. <clears throat> How you feeling today? How you feeling today? How you feeling today? How you feeling today? I'm feeling good. Feeling good? Feeling good. You're looking good, sweetheart. Thank you. Look, you're glowing. The, 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 the baby bump is bumping and the glow is glowing. That it is. And the hair uh -huh. is it's growing. It's, it's yes, growing. it's lengthening. It's lengthening. It's, it's older than that. <laughs> All right. I mean, uh, episode two. This is bed talk, and we sit in the bed. And we talk. Tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it. Let's get it. So What's up? What's going on for today, man? What are we, talk what are we talking about? Uh, what are we talking about today? Why is this generation obsessed with sex? Um, bum, bum, bum. I think I think it has a lot to do with growing up. We really didn't have as much access to porn and adult material uh, like we do now. I feel like when I was growing up, like if you found like a like a naughty magazine. That was like a holy grail. You know what I'm saying? They were far and few in between. People had them. People's parents had them. You know what I'm saying? But they weren't really super, super available. You know what I'm saying? And then once the internet came about, and before the internet, um, I know it was a few people whose parents might have had the DVDs, Big Booty Holes, Volume 26. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Ch Cherokee and, and Pinky. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. And... um you know, once the internet really started to surge, the availability just became a click away. So I feel like our generation was like really the first generation like of hypersexualized kids, teens, and then adults because we just had that accessibility. And now it's like, you know, before social media, you know, you, you was getting you was getting your account banned or whatever. Now it's like, you know, you go on Twitter, it's basically Pornhub. You go on IG, it's basically soft porn. So now it's, you know, it's even getting to the point where you might catch a video or two on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Not even a video or two. Now it's like rampant. You got to click the link. You know what I'm talking about? Like before, it wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't that accessible. So I feel like that's why. So... Now kids and, and young adults and, you know, it's, it starts younger because it's a click away, man. What you think? What's your, what's your views on that? Um, not saying that music back then wasn't, like, vulgar, but, like, now it's, like, sex sales. Like, every artist is half naked. <sighs> I'm not gonna. It's I'm not honest, gonna interject. I'm not gonna interject. I'm gonna let you talk. I'm gonna not, let you that's talk. That's what I said. Like even back then, it was talked about. You know, we had T-shirt and my panties. Uh, what? <laughs> Foxy Brown, Little Kim. That's what Trina. I'm saying. I know. So are you I talking know. about before them? No, I'm just saying. Just in general, it's just been in our faces. When do you think it started? Because that's the early '90s. What we talked about right, right now with T-shirt and my panties, Little Kim, mm -hmm. uh, Foxy Brown. All of that, you know what I'm saying? So before that, what really was available music-wise? Listen, they had some nasty songs even before then. But I'm just saying like from, like how you're saying, our generation and on, it's just like people looked at Lil' Kim or looked at Adina Howard and it was like, man, that's what I want to be like. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to make a spark can disappear in my mouth. Like It was those type of things that's like set in front of you. Mm -hmm. And then now it's just building. And now nothing in your, nothing but sex is in the music. Mm -hmm. Whether it's male, female, it does not matter. Right. Nothing but yeah. my, my ass, my pussy, my this, my this. And it's like the right. same thing. It's not censored like the way it used to. Like before, like even when songs like... um. Um, like little, like like I like I said well, about Lil Kim, like Lil Kim stuff was risque. Trina stuff was risque, but she wasn't get, you wasn't hearing it on the radio. He was having to get the mixtapes and maybe the album, or you know what I'm saying, the underground bootleg stuff to really hear the vulgar, you know, the, that that my pussy, my, you know, what I'm saying whatever. Like now it's like mainstream radio, TV, internet, you know, what I'm saying social media, to where it's like. First of all, the, the fact that another thing, the parents are letting the children listen to it. First of all, our parents, 
would have been like that one turn that off. Was we not we would have <laughs> ever came in the house talking about uh my pussy pink, my booty hole brown. <laughs> we, what? Backhanded, punched on. Listen. What with the belt? Even no singing t shirt in my panties was yeah, dangerous. Yeah, it like was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. I never said it. I said it in my head. I never said it out loud. But um, you know what I'm saying? Even Suki Yana, shout out to Suki. Like at the end of the day, do your thing, get your money, do you do what you do. But I feel like it's up to the parents to really dictate or shelter, you know what I'm saying, the children from that music. Because at the end of the day, if the the first of all, the parents are younger than ever. So that's another thing. It's like a lot of the kids are friends with their parents. So it's like there's not even a, 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 you know, it's like the parents are like, damn, they're having a, a friendship relationship with the kids. So it's like they think it's cute that their little, you know, daughter is twerking now or saying certain, certain singing songs or raps or whatever. And it's not like how it used to be where it's yeah, like, not this one. Like, well, yeah. well, you know how we, we a little different. We still got some, you know, some of our parents, like, you know, our parents and our grandparents are still that stuff in us that we kind of carry with our kids but i'm speaking for the, the majority you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying like a lot of the, a lot of these kids is having kids like you know what i'm saying shit my mom had me when she was 16 you know what i mean so it's just like i had a friendship relationship with my mom you know what i'm saying so it was like but everybody wasn't like that growing up in the 80s 70s you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but i feel like now it's like if you got a kid by 18 19 that's normal anything before like even 16 it's yeah. kind of like normal then. Yeah. yeah. And and very common now. Very, yeah. very common. Yeah. But I just feel like to tie that all in together, it's just placed out in front of you. Mm -hmm. So now I imagine a six year old walking around, my coochie pink, my booty hole brown is just out there. Like either they're here at school or they're here in the store or they're here in the car. Like it just it's just in their face. So it's just like, mm, I need to try that. Mm -hmm. Or, ooh, I want to be nasty like Suki. Or, ooh, I want to mm -hmm. be, you know. Or this is how you get ahead in life. Yep. This is how you get attention. This mm -hmm. is how you get boys to like you. Mm -hmm. This is how you get money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cash me out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That that whole thing. And it's like the kids are, are thinking like, okay, this is what I got to do to get ahead. Or this is what I got to do to get attention. And it's like, you know, it's not, it's not really deterred. It's yeah. encouraged in in a, in a way. So. Yeah, like for us, it was like a privilege to even hear that type of stuff, or like you said, come across the booty video, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that, or even what was it um, on BET? Um, what is it? BET Uncut. Yeah, yeah like yeah. To try to stay. We up had to and wait till that, the parents yeah. fell asleep. It was like we had to hide and sneak to do it. Yeah, I did Just that. Just be sitting there chilling, listening to it. Yeah. And then it's even worse when it's encouraged. Yeah. So like, oh, I get it, get it, get it. Right. And your mom is doing all this mm -hmm. and they singing Sexy Red. Or, or they twerking in front of their kids. They twerking in front of their daughters. They twerking in front of their sons. And it's like, it's no separation of, okay, mm -hmm. this is adult time. This is kid. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like everybody is kind of like merging together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's kind of people be like, why is the world the way it is? It's like. They, the kids is growing up too fast. It ain't, there's no time to be a kid. So it's just like, yeah, yeah. that's why. So to answer your question, that's my, yeah. that's our take on that. I like yeah. that question. That was a good question. Yeah. For sure. What else we got? Oh, your turn. Let's, see. Let's go in these notes. <laughs> that, that, that little chuckle was a little sensual. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it now! See, oh, it's everywhere. Look at you. Listen, you, 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 you did it. <laughs> oh, no, I no. cannot. All right, let me see. Let's talk. Let's let's keep it. Let's keep it about music then. The state of the music industry and the quality of artists right now. How you feel about it? Music right now. How I feel about it. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't listen to now music like i hear it some songs i know like you know i'm just a jukebox like i can hear it and repeat it but that don't mean i like it or i'm into it or like you see me playing it in the car or something like that it's mm -hmm. just like to me it's like mumble mm -hmm. and you have those gems that's placed within the mumble you know mm -hmm. j cole drake kendrick lamar like those people that actually lyrics make sense compared mm -hmm. to I don't want to. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to name it. nobody. I get but, it. You know, I get it. I get it. Cause like, like 
like that time mom was on her way up here and she was just like you can make a song about anything because mm-hmm. the guy just kept repeating it and that was a song and everybody just walking around singing it it's like mm-hmm. no substance anymore You're right. so i definitely 2000s and before is like something i would listen to or search for right besides the the those little gems that's in between now joining lucas you know right those people in between there but just i just feel like now it's just all about i don't i don't even popularity um money. <laughs> almost money almost who can make the dumbest song yeah. and get rich off of it right or the most basic motherfuckers don't even really try it's like they and now it's like a flex to like not right it's like i just go in the booth and just say yeah, whatever yeah, and i'm like you yeah, know that's yeah, that's cool yeah 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 bitch yeah, yeah a little, yeah. put and a little bitch on it for a little for a little <laughs> very demure listen and it's a song <laughs> right right and you're going crazy and it's just like what yeah yeah I don't even call it music anymore. It's just like noise at this point. Right, <laughs> right. I feel like I feel like me, being a music artist and and doing music and being in the music industry used to be a dream. You know what I'm saying? A dream of mine. And I, it, the 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 picture that it, that it was was so pretty, and it's always and it seemed so perfect. And it's just like the older you get, the more you start to see, the more you start to realize, and the deeper you get into it, you start to realize. Like, it's really all smoke and mirrors, you know what I'm saying? Like, the people with the talent, the people that can really make a song. And, and I don't feel like making a song means you got to be super duper lyrical. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't, everybody doesn't have to be a, K, a Kendrick or, you know, a J. Cole with, you know, super, you know, mega un, double entendres and all that type of stuff. But I do feel like you can hear when somebody's trying. <laughs> like, you can hear when somebody's trying to mm-hmm. make a vibe like you know what i'm saying or it's a thought going not even just about like necessarily trying but like has a has an emotion to it like i like you can tell when somebody loves their craft like you know what i'm saying like when you're just like yo i'm just in this drum to get some money i'm just in here to get some bitches i'm just here to get you know i'm saying some fame like i feel like for people that that's their goal it's like that's cool but that's i don't i don't feel like that's going to be here 20 years 30 years from now you know what I'm saying? Like the people who really take this shit serious, who really use it as a, who use it as like a, you know what I'm saying, a, an escape to get, you know what I'm saying, their emotions out or get their thoughts out or to, to impact the culture or to talk about current events. You know what I'm saying? I feel like those songs are, you know what I mean, was going to be like, fucking, we still listen to Michael Jackson to this Prince, day. To this day. You know what Prince I'm saying? To this day. Prince to this day. <laughs> like Tupac, Biggie to this day, Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like Nas. All these people who really took the music and put their heart and soul into it. Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? The list could go on. I see Kanye already. Um, but like the people who were like architects of creating sounds and trying to bridge the gap from different genres and just, you know what I'm saying? Have fun. Not only just have fun with it, but like it meant something to them. Yeah. So, yeah. And those people that was, you know, we call them the mama rappers or the. You know, not really trying, and it, it's sad to say a lot of some of them, you know, either passed away from the lifestyle that comes with the music industry, or they got one hit wonders and can't pick back up from it because it's just like you're in and you're out, mm-hmm. like you didn't put your craft to it, you didn't put nothing to it, no thought. It was fun. It was a TikTok dance for the, for the month or two, and then it's just mm-hmm. like, where are these people at now? And that's because the business behind it is so fickle. Like, a lot of people don't realize, like, it's really a machine behind a lot of these artists that it just seems like, you know, they just had a, had a hot song. No, they had a bag, and the bag made the song seem like it was more than what it was. You know what I'm saying? Mm. A lot of these people who have the appearance of organic growth or, like, they just, like, the term industry plant came out, you know what I'm saying, a few years ago. And I feel like it's a super, like, dope term because it really makes sense how certain people like it might they might have had a deal before they even came out like you know what i'm saying certain songs it's like this motherfucker just came out of nowhere no he been signed but he just wasn't signed if that makes sense mm-hmm. so it's just like you know whether it's somebody's family member that, that was able to get plugged in whether it's you know certain things that happen behind the scenes to get them connected to you know certain to get in certain doors a little bit quicker but that organic one that that hit that just happens to slide through the the cracks if you're not you know what i'm saying signing certain paperwork or you know what i'm saying that 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 like example i don't even want to really go into 
<laughs> what, 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 Get what, you a him. Listen, yeah. I'm learning something just sitting here listening. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it gets deep. It gets deep. You're not going to talk about this shit forever. I know. <laughs> That's really Get my you shit. Him. You know what I'm saying? If a man don't teach you nothing, leave him where they at. Yeah, it gets, it gets deep. But uh, yeah, let's keep it light. Let's keep it light for okay, today. Okay, we'll keep it light. Keep um, it light. Next question is on you. Okay. Okay. Because I know that music was one of those things that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I be fanned out, y'all. I'm sorry. I know every Drake Brown the song. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so, what was your biggest challenge you faced when you were, like, pursuing, like, being in the music industry? Mm. Like, yeah, I'm going to hit you. I want to <laughs> get you. Oh, my goodness. Okay. We can talk about it. I feel like one of the biggest challenges I personally faced was not wanting to do certain things that were against my morals. No diddy. No diddy. Very much. <laughs> like Sometimes you got to tell diddy no, right? That's what they say. And I said no. And uh, sometimes when you, when you don't want to party... It's a lot of that going on with different people who are quote unquote gatekeepers, you know, to, uh, you know, really get to that next level. You know what I'm saying? I was having a crazy run and then they got to that point where, you know, they come at you and actually, you know, you, you like to you like to dibble and dabble. And I'm like, ah, it's not really. No, no shade to you know. That's not my thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I would, I would respectfully decline, you know. And then as soon as you respectfully decline, your career <laughs> declines. So it was a lot of things that were in the making, but it's like soon as I wasn't interested or wasn't, you know, didn't want to go against my morals, it kind of, you know, all kind of went, you know, left. Mm -hmm. Or went downhill to say, you know what I mean? So I feel like that's the biggest one. You don't want to do certain things that are against. And that's what it comes with the whole, oh, he sold his soul. I feel like, I don't feel like necessarily selling your soul is, you know, to the devil. It could be you just going against your morals for, you know, for fame or for fortune or for uh, opportunity. And as um, soon as you're willing to compromise your integrity, that's why you can't sleep at night. That's why you start getting on drugs. That's why you start, you know, doing things to cope with, going against certain things that's keeping you up at night it's like damn i really did that how you look at yourself in the mirror after that you know what i'm saying it's mm -hmm. like every every dollar ain't, ain't you know ain't good and all money ain't good money that's what they say right so mm -hmm. it's just like you know stand for something or fall for anything and i wasn't really willing to compromise my uh my cheeks yo not the <laughs> cheeks <laughs> that part <laughs> but just imagine like how many people that, that, like, something like that's happened to mm -hmm. that didn't even get a chance to get known about? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, like mm -hmm. this is what you got to do, you know? Be no, let me, <laughs> mm -hmm. whatever. And it's like, nah, bro, like, I'm just here for the music. Right. <laughs> Ain't even heard of them. Nope. Life over. Like, nope. almost like a blacklisted type thing. Yeah, I mean, time yeah. to go. Come to, time to go back to working at 9 to 5. You know, or, you know, stack up your bread, it's get your get your credit right and fund your own career. Mm -hmm. There's ways around it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's just really like a lot of people don't really understand the business aspect of it. And even me, I didn't really learn the business aspect of it until, you know, recently. And I was like, OK, maybe going a different route, doing, you know, what I love to do and come back around to the music. But um, it's expensive. It's an expensive game. And a lot of people don't really you know, a lot of independent artists is like, you know, I'm I'm in the studio and I'm doing this and I'm grinding and I don't know why it's just not clicking. You know what I'm saying? And, it's, and you might have the, the dopest music in the world, but if you ain't got the funding or if you ain't got, you know, the bag to really connect them dots. And when I say the bag, I don't mean like $10,000, $20,000. I'm talking about 100K plus, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. And that's, that's on the light side. So... It's really it's an expensive game, but you know what they say you can't you can't make money if you don't spend money. You know what I'm saying? So for sure, it's one of those things. You hear the passion, y'all. You hear the passion. That's why I asked that question. <laughs> What's the conspiracy theory you secretly? <laughs> <laughs> What's the conspiracy theory you secretly believe in or find fascinating? Yep, I'm going there. Let's oh do it. Oh my god, I was not ready for yeah, that. I know you were. Let's do it. Episode two. Matter of fact, click and click that subscribe button below, man. Make sure you like, drop a comment. 
crash, crash, and smash that subscribe button like that. It's been talking. We sitting in the bed and talk. I just got slapped in the face. What? <laughs> Let's hear it. Let's talk about it. Cause like I really don't go deep into stuff like like how you do. So it's just like, what do I really think is like be interesting? But I guess I'll just say the one that I say all the time, like the government. <laughs> it's the government. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I really don't. That's a that's a hard one, babe. Like um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of conspiracy theories that I've heard. Mm -hmm. um, the whole round versus flat earth thing okay um i think that's kind of interesting like mm -hmm. going back and forth with the different points like the guy you showed us uh, was it last night the guy you showed me last night with the dress that was talking about it mm -hmm. you know it's kind of interesting to you know see people different views and everything but i never go down the rabbit hole mm -hmm. <laughs> um so, yeah, like, I crack jokes all the time. Like, oh, it's the government. They're listening. Mm -hmm. They're doing this. They're doing that. But, like, mm -hmm. I won't necessarily say, like, I'm so deep into it to I really be clueless until you actually show me something or talk to me about it and make yeah. me question it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's a hard question. <laughs> I'm sorry. Listen, man. I would probably say one of mine. I got too many. So, I'm going to probably... <laughs> I'ma just I'ma just go off with one for for this episode. We we mm -hmm. can come back to this another okay, one. But yeah, one yeah. I would say, um, the Mandela effect is super interesting. Okay, um, I agree. Because it's just like, yo, is this is this stuff really not what we thought it was? And is did it really get switched around, or did we just never really pay attention to really what it was? And everybody just had a misconception. But it's just like, bro. Everybody thought it was Luke, I am your father. Everybody thought that. But for it to not ever have been that, though. Wait, what was it? What, what is it? No, I am your father. It's Luke. If you go back and watch it, it's no, I, was, I am your father. No cat. And it's just like certain things like that or uh, the damn, the damn, um, what's his name? The Monopoly guy. Mm-hmm. Then he always had that little circle thing, the monocle on his eye. No. See, I feel like I remember him with the monocle on his eye. I, I I'm from a I, different. I'm from a different timeline. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm from a different timeline. We only a year apart, babe. Huh? We're only a year apart. I'm from a different timeline, though. Because <laughs> in my timeline, he had the thing on his eye. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, no. I don't. I don't know what you're talking okay. about. Okay. All right. Listen. <laughs> drop a comment below with your with your favorite uh, conspiracy theory. Yeah. That, but, was, um, that was a hard question, babe. Yeah. That was that was fun. I right, go for it. Definitely hit me in the jugular with that one. Mm -hmm. What's the weirdest or most irrational fear that you have? <laughs> <laughs> um. Let me think about that one. Yeah, see? <laughs> it, it, it's too many. <laughs> um, oh, good. I get like a little bit of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Not even a little bit. I get super, super anxious when a cop gets behind me. <laughs> I mean, like, every time. And it, most of the time, they don't be paying me no goddamn mind. But when that motherfucker <laughs> get behind me, I'm like this. I start, I, two. I start holding my breath. <laughs> I put my phone down. <laughs> Anything. Look. I ain't going back. <laughs> In my head, this motherfucker about to pull me over and I'm going to jail. I ain't even do nothing. But in my head, I'm going to jail. <laughs> I'm going to jail. <laughs> yeah, so that's one of my irrational fears that I got. That's... Yeah, I think that's a good one. Okay. What's yours? <laughs> I think, honestly, mine is so stupid. Um, because you know how clumsy I am, right? Mm -hmm. And how accident prone I am. Like, I just have this thing. I'm just going to fall. I'm just going to fuck myself up, like, really bad. Oh, man. Like, I'm going to walk out of the house and be like, oh, and then my ankle's going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> like out of nowhere. <laughs> so it's like, if you ever pay attention when I walk outside, when I step down, it's like really slow. It's not like a, I'm going to run. It's like a. Just just to make sure that you ain't breaking your ankle. Yes. That's crazy. Yeah, no. That is crazy. Yeah. My poor baby. I know. I stay hurting myself. Yo. You do, though. 
It seemed like every time we go to my mom's house, you just cut your finger on like the in, on anything. I cut my finger on the water bottle. How? The the little. How do you cut your finger on I'm, it? I'm trying to explain. You know the piece that's under the top that binds it together. I right? you know you open it. Sometimes the, it's like little pieces that like stick out. And when I go to do this, it cuts my hand. No, he be bleeding. Yeah. No, that ain't never <laughs> happened to me. See. Dangerous. I'm no. dangerous. You like <laughs> bubble boy. You need to be inside the bubble. <laughs> it's dangerous. You need to stay inside the bubble. That or um, anything with bugs. Okay. I'm tapped out. <laughs> yeah, when that when that when that moth the moth that came in, you was like, Babe, get it, get it. He was going through it. I'm gonna get attacked. They're gonna fly off with me. <laughs> he was going <laughs> through it. Well, why he picking a question though? I don't give a piss about nothing but the tie, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you. Roll tide. Roll tide. Listen. That game, <sighs> that game had me about to. Whoo. About to have a baby early, stressing me out. Listen. <laughs> listen. Whoo. But listen, them true freshmen came through. Can't even be mad. Yeah. You know the dude that caught the interception was a freshman? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, they was going crazy. Yeah. That was a good game. Yes. Yeah, Georgia was sick. Who I was sick and we was winning. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ooh. What is the most surprising thing you've learned about yourself when it comes to sex? All right, so two things. Mm -hmm. First thing, I take it very well. Big girl. Big dog status. Mm -hmm. Does not matter. Remember the day you put the shoes on? <laughs> You thought I was going to tap out. No, sir. Okay. No, sir. More. I, had to, I had to get the, the grip, the, the traction, the, the shoes up. Now, I see important why they be having the Tim's on. I get it. <laughs> no, I get it now. I get it. Okay. So what what that, is all said? So you don't want, uh, want a little puppy or a big dog. Yeah. Listen. Okay. So that's yeah. one. Okay. And the second one is just the fact that since I've been... With you, you have unlocked things that I didn't even know I was able to damn do. The way you be like, babe, what was you doing? I don't even know. I can't even tell you. I mm. shocked myself. Mm. It's just like, I just go off you and I'm like, all right, he likes that. Try some different shit here. Mm. Like, it's just like, it's like I go so far to aim to please and it's just like, it just happens. Mm -hmm. Just, and I'll be looking at myself like, who the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> like, when I got pregnant with Braylon, people were just like, how you got a baby? You don't have sex. Like, I was literally, like, plain Jane. Mm -hmm. Like, boring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> boring. If only you guys knew. All right. <laughs> she gonna... be boring with you, but with me, she naughty. Hey, listen. Oh, Take oh, pride oh, of vibes. Oh, <laughs> listen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Sorry, yeah. mom. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, bed talk, baby. Hit that subscribe button. Um, what's one talking? thing that uh, most surprising thing that I've learned about myself? I think I have a natural gift for eating pussy. Mm. It's like it's like second nature for me. Like I guess it's because I just like you know to please. And I was like, well, with them legs, this motherfucker shaking like that. That motherfucker, oh, you like it? Okay, I'm doing something right. I'm doing something right. Okay. Yo. Okay. Um, that, and I feel like, also, I like kinky shit. Like, when you started licking my nipples, I said, oh, that's something different. What the fuck off me? Yo. What you doing with that, yo? Don't look at me. Freak yeah. Listen, I, that was, you know, one of them things that it was just like, you know, I didn't, uh, erogenous zones that weren't never, you know what I'm saying? Most women don't go and explore erogenous zones on men. It's kind of like they go right, you know, the second pick or right to penetration and maybe a little ball action, you know. It's, you know, it's not, no, no type of exploration, so. <laughs> yeah. I remember like it was yesterday. Ho, 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 oh, yeah. Ho, yeah, that ho. was different. I like that. <laughs> What's the weirdest habit you have that no one knows about? <laughs> 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 oh, baby. 
can't talk. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna be open book. I like smelling your ass. <laughs> Yo, I can't help it. My fingers are always in her ass, and I just. I'm so sorry. That's the truth. God. No, ain't no damn cut. You should have asked me. You got what you. <laughs> You ain't think I was gonna go there. Listen, it's just I don't know. It's like a pheromone thing that just it, I don't know. I don't, I can't help it. I just be it's like a dog. I just be smelling your ass. That's what I, like I was like get the dog out. I just can't help it. It's like a, yeah. Well, ladies, that's what happened. We have a good pH. Oh my gosh! Stop. And it's not just the ass, it's just like the front end, like the, all, of, all of the scents. So just... <laughs> Come here. Give me that. <laughs> I got a onesie on. You can't get nothing. Right. Okay. Your turn. I feel like you're the only person that ever notices about me. So outside of you, um, anything triggers a song, a meme, a TV show, uh, a quote, anything like... Mm-hmm. It just triggers me, and I'll bust out in a song, quote a movie, mm-hmm. and it's just like I can't even control it. That's why I call her juke, like a jukebox. Literally, like, we be having you? a serious ass conversation, and I'll be like, "Damn, babe, I hope that one day I don't fucking I don't know pass out, pass out loving you." What the <laughs> fuck? What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about some real shit. Pass out. Drink, faded. See, Drink. And she made it. I wasn't even. I wasn't even <laughs> sick. Like it'll literally be anything. Yes. And she'll find the lyrics to it somehow. I'm very bad at it. It's it's a very. I won't say a bad habit, but it's it's a strong habit. Especially when you when you really trying to have a serious conversation, I just be looking at you like, <laughs> really you, though. You know, it's coming from a good place. I'm really breaking my heart. <laughs> my pouring my heart out to you. And you just come out. Pour <laughs> Yo, ACDC from 19. 19- like, come on, bro. Like, I'm sorry. I'll be like, I just came from the gym. I'm feeling like a big papa. I love it when you call me big papa. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I know it's a problem. It's 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 not a problem, but it's a problem. Like even growing up, like at the store with my mom, and somebody walked by and said something really prominent that's in my brain. I have to repeat it. Well, that's why your name is Juke, babe. You got it honestly. Like even you, you in the kitchen, like yeah, bro, that's a good John. I'm back here, like yeah, bro, that's a good John. Like the whole thing, like it's just I don't know. Little, Very weird habit that I have. Like a parakeet. <laughs> Literally. <sighs> Let's see <laughs> what else we got on here. Embarrassing me. This might, this, might, <laughs> this might be the last one. We gotta get ready for bed. We gotta work in the morning. Gotta put you to bed. bed see? Bed. How often should couples have sex? <laughs> <laughs> You're determined. Oh, let me get this real quick. <laughs> <laughs> determined determined that's all my questions been i just want you to know that i'm gonna get you back next episode don't worry about it i would say sir mm-hmm. that would depend on the couple okay well we're we're, we're okay. asking your okay. opinion okay okay mm-hmm. okay like i said it depends on the couple mm-hmm. like uh <laughs> We were we we were rabbits before this load was in the way, but that was just us though. You know, some people can go. We're not asking that. Okay. What do you think is the ideal amount of times? How often should couples have sex? How often? Um, we don't need no hypotheticals. How often? Break it down. Every other day. And I don't, I don't mean like always intercourse. Like you could just literally have oral sex, or just make sure that person's, cause it, just make sure that person's satisfied in some type of way, okay. whether it be coming from head or you know, quick little hand job or you know whatever case may be. It just be something 
Because for one, that's a, a release for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So like having a rough day, you know, sometimes you don't always want to talk about it. But hey, go ahead and get it out of you. <laughs> yeah, hey, yo, I'm sweet. <laughs> get it out of you. you rest well. You calm, you know. Got some clarity after that, and you know, stuff like that. So it's just like every other day should be something. Every other day. Okay. Yeah. I can take that. Maybe. Every Sophomore. other day, every other day, two days. You know, of course, cycle time and all that. But, you know, just mm-hmm. it should be some type of sexual intimacy. Kind of like often, because for one, you know, they say that's a big thing for men, especially if you're dating a man, you know. And like I said, it don't always have to be in the course. Because, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes you can make them come other ways because you fire like that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, I, I would say every other day, uh, or we going by the week, I would say at least three times, three to four times a week. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm one of those people I like extended release. So it's like if we go like a good two to three days, four days, maybe a week, but then we got to that, that, that sixth, seventh day. Good job. <laughs> He's out of here. Give me my Tim's. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, so <laughs> I feel like mixing that up, like a nice long break, and then every other day, every other day, nice long break, every other day. Show you what you're missing. Yeah. Like that. Like that. And make it fun. Mm-hmm. Even if you just role play to give head, make it fun. Mm-hmm. Just enjoy it. It's, your, it's, your, it's like I feel like it's your, a space for you to be creative with your partner. Indeed. So, I try. All right, yeah. That's, that's episode two. That's episode two. And what this is what we say. We're not here to lecture y'all. We're just here to have a good conversation. You know, all that behind it to be like, you need to, you need to. <laughs> you motherfuckers are men. And you are a good woman. Yeah, so. We're not here for that. You need to have sex with your partner every day or you're not a masculine man. Yo. He's going to cheat on you. Oh, yeah. That's not us. We're here for our point of views and fun. Drop your comments below, man. What should we talk about next? If you got any questions, if you got anything you want us to talk about, any topics you want us to hit on, feel free. Um, We're also going to start putting uh, the email at the bottom so we can start getting people on the show. We're going to start having uh, live interviews and stuff like that coming yeah. soon. So while so. we're talking, you get to talk to us. We get to talk to you. Pick your brain and see how you're feeling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, don't come on here trying to argue. We ain't argue with nobody. I like a good debate, though. A okay. debate, not an argument. Yeah, yeah. No, I like a good debate. You know, we keep, definitely can do keep that. Keep it cute, sis. Listen. Spicy, my. Mm. Make sure y'all hit that subscribe button, man. Tap in. This is Bed Talk, where we sit in the bed. And we talk. Peace.